How's it going gamers? Today I got this totally crazy thing going on. We are going to be gaming on a Mac Pro from 2006. That is so crazy. But look at this thing. This is a Mac Pro from the year 2006. And it's a little bit beat up, but I think you can agree that it still looks pretty cool. I always like the design of the Mac Pro. And now we're going to be really putting it up to the test to see if it holds up in 2022. So what's really cool about the Mac Pro is that it actually has two processors inside of it. That means that with both processors, we have a total of four cores. Now it doesn't sound that impressive today, but back in 2006, this was kind of the bee's knees. Now this is really actually like the lowest end Mac Pro you can get because the other Mac Pros from the year had eight cores with both processors. So this is gonna be a really a testament to see how well the Mac Pro has survived. So the first thing you need to notice, that is not Mac OS. I'm actually running Windows because I'm going to be trying to play some games today. While you can play some games on Mac, I think it's going to work out better if we run Windows. And because this is basically just a normal Intel system, it can run Windows just fine. Now to get Windows onto this thing, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. If you guys are interested in me creating a tutorial about how to get Windows onto an old Mac Pro like this, hit that like button and give me a comment down below and tell me if you want that. Now while this thing's booting up, I'm going to open it up and show you what is actually inside of the Mac Pro. So you can see on the inside there, we just have that puny little graphics card. That is a, I believe like a GeForce 7300 or something. It's really old, but of course the whole system is pretty old. But the other cool thing is that this system has eight sticks of RAM. That means you can actually put a lot of RAM in these systems for how old they are. Now in this system, I actually have a total of 20 gigs of RAM. That means I have four sticks of four gigs each, and then another four sticks of one gig each, which adds up to 20 total. So this is actually called the Mac Pro 1-1, which means it's the first version they made, first year, and that's kind of important if you ever are looking into buying these systems because certain systems have certain upgrades. All right, so we just got booted into Windows here, and you can see, let, look at that, full-fledged Windows 10, on this system, no problem. You see in Task Manager, things aren't looking good already. We have already pinned out the CPU. That is actually just because of darn Epic Games. The Epic's Game Launcher is kind of bloated and it just always sucks up your CPU. But you can see we have everything show up here. We have the Intel Xeon 5130, just a measly two gigahertz. And you can see down here, two sockets, four processors and then of course we also have the 20 gigabytes of DDR2 eight out of eight slots used out of just a smoking hot 667 megahertz that is so hot I will say already some things are a little unusable the CPU does get pretty much pinned whenever you do anything like Windows update or anything like that finally Epic Games is coming up here and I assume that it's downloading something because whenever Epic Games downloads something, it just kills the system. All right, so I closed that Epic Games just for the meantime because it was just hogging up the system. But otherwise, the system runs really well and it's actually pretty snappy if you're just clicking around. So I actually did a Cinebench run and it was not impressive. You can see we're actually at the bottom of the list here. If I zoom in here, you can see our little... Intel Xeon is just getting almost 900 points while these laptop chips are getting four or five times the performance which is not that impressive but you have to keep in mind this is the lowest end system that you could buy at the time and you can see Windows updates starting to kick in which is always awesome so I think what we should try and do is launch a game so actually the only game I have installed right now is Fortnite because I thought this would probably be the one game that would give this shot a chance because Fortnite is one of those games that it can run on pretty low hardware but it's still a recent game and sitting there nope what I'm guessing that means is that because our graphics card doesn't support DirectX 11 the game's not going to run and that's I mean I kind of expected that this graphics card wasn't going to be good enough. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and upgrade the graphics card inside the Mac Pro. So one of the great things about the Mac Pro is you do have a lot of room for expansion. So we actually do have several full-sized X16 slots in the back that we can put a graphics card into. So the first card I'm going to try and put in there is actually this GTX 
960 4 gig model. Okay, so let's install the new graphics card here. So of course it goes in just like the other card came out here. Try to line it up. I'm gonna try the bottom slot because that's actually what Apple says the first slot is. Now, does it matter? I don't know. All right, I got everything plugged in and ready to go. Now we just have to hit that power button. Oh, don't explode, please. Okay. Fans are spinning. Quite fast. I hear the boot, but I don't see anything on the monitor yet. A little bit odd that the fans are spinning at full power. I think that might not be right. Oh, that's probably why. Our power supply was not turned on. So if I turn that on. Okay, powered it on in. There we go. That's more like it. Now the system, it's okay if the fans don't spin on that graphics card because the graphics card has a zero decibel mode. I see it turning on. That's Windows right there. Look at that. That's Windows. Okay, we're loading into Windows. This is good news. All right, Fortnite's loading up. Oh, this is further than we got before. I think it's actually launching. Now, I've actually already installed the drivers for this, so that's why it's working right off the bat. But look at that, about loaded in. So we finally got into a game here, and I'm using a capture card here. So any footage you see is not affecting the graphics performance. And I also have the NVIDIA performance monitor up in the top right so you can see how things are doing. I'm gonna get into a game here and we're gonna probably play around with the settings to try and get things to run smooth. So you can see right up in the top right, the CPU utilization is always pinged at 100. And I think that's just cause it's trying to load in textures. So um, one of the things I'm gonna try and do is put as much strain as we can on the GPU, but remove as much strain as we can from the CPU because that is our limiting factor right now. So in the settings here, I'm gonna play around with the settings. So I already know anti-aliasing is gonna be all GPU dependent. That should not affect the system. I'm wondering if shadows is gonna hurt the CPU performance or not. We're also at 100% 3D resolution and we're running at 1080p. So you can see we are just really struggling to run right now. Okay, so just sitting here, if I turn off our FPS limit, right now I have the FPS limit at 60, but if I turn that off, you can see we'll run about 50 frames a second. So as it stands right now, it seems like all the settings have an effect on our FPS performance, except for the anti-aliasing. So that is where we stand right now. We have not maxed out the GPU yet. Okay, so basically I forgot to plug in my microphone, but that's okay. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna put an RTX 3070 into the Mac Pro to really put it to the limit. I know it's not gonna turn out well, but I just wanted to see what the results would be and have some fun. One of the things I haven't mentioned is that I'm using an external power supply to power the graphics cards. And that is just because I didn't have the right cables at the time to power them from the Mac Pro itself. But I've since gotten the cables in, so in a follow-up video, I will show how those work. But you can see with the RTX 3070 in there, it's basically the biggest card you can put in there any longer and it wouldn't fit. So you can see the system boots up just fine because it is just a regular graphics card, even though it's quite a bit more powerful than the 960 that we had before. But... We've already got NVIDIA drivers in there, so it mostly figured itself out, and I was able to boot into Windows just fine. Now you can see we're actually running. Ooh, it's moving all over the place, but up to 80 FPS in the menu with the settings maxed out. We got ray tracing on all the way. Of course our CPU is pinned, but I'm hoping that we can remove that CPU bottleneck just enough to where maybe it gets playable. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, dude, the polygons. Okay, everything's starting to load in. It's unloading all the graphics. Yikes. This is, this is not playable. I would not call this playable. Come on, I'm hoping once we hit the ground here, can we get, okay, okay. Things are improving. Closer and closer we get to the ground here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm just gonna let it, I'm gonna let it sit for a second. How are we looking? 
35% on the GPU. It's actually more than I thought. So there you go. I guess we can ray trace, but oh my goodness. Forget about playable. It's playable. Look, this is playable right there, but as soon as you move, ooh. Oh, I'm getting shot by someone. Hold up, hold up. Oh, do not stop. Dude. No, no, no. Uh oh, it froze. Dude, did I get a hit? Oh my god. I. Dude, I got a kill. That's official. I'm a gamer. Look at that. It doesn't even matter that I'm, I'm at point 0.1 FPS or whatever, dude. I think that was a bot, but... Alright guys, thanks for watching. I know this was just a little bit of fun here. Of course, you could game, and I'm sure some games will work a lot better than others playing on this system, but of course, yeah, you're gonna have a CPU bottleneck when you put an RTX 3070 in this thing and try to max things out. So what I'm curious is, do you think I should try and spend the $15 get a couple new processors in here and see if we can actually get this thing playable because I feel like it's on the verge of playable. If it just didn't have those hiccups, I'd be totally fine with 30 FPS all day long. And theoretically, with those new processors, it should have double the performance. So what do you guys think? If you want me to do that, let me know down in the comments below. And also, should I try overclocking? I heard we can do a little bit of overclocking on these systems. I think that would also help improve it quite a bit. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.